Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for uh, this afternoon's webinar, where we're going to give you uh, an overview of how the three schools involved uh, in our EdTech consortium have made the journey to remote learning and then looking at the next stage as well as we start to migrate back into an, an in-school environment. Um, could I just ask, as, as everyone seems to have done, that you turn your cameras uh, off and uh, go on to mute for this uh, webinar. Uh, what we will do is there will be opportunities as we move through the uh, webinar to ask questions. Um, and the easiest way to do that is if you post questions in the right hand conversation window, which you can access down at the bottom on the menu in the bottom middle where you can uh, obviously turn your screen and your camera on and off. There's one that looks like a speech bubble and you'll be able to type into the meeting chat. Uh, we are aware that one or two people uh, in the past have had uh, issues with that. If that is the case, when we get to a question session, uh, which there will be two or three throughout this webinar, and you would like to ask a question, feel free just to put your hand up using the raise your hand function at the bottom. And then we will uh, ask you to come off um, mute and you can ask your question uh, to us by speaking rather than in the chat window. Um, so thank you very much again for joining us. And uh, we'll make a start uh, with looking at how the consortium is made up. So as I've already said, the consortium is made up of um, three schools. Uh, there's uh, Ribblesdale High School, which is based in the Ribble Valley in Clitheroe. Uh, we've got High Furlong, uh, which is a special school based in Blackpool. And we've got Hambleton, which is a primary school, uh, which is also based on the Fylde, uh, just near Poultney Fylde. So the good thing about our consortium is that uh, we've all demonstrated the the excellence in the use of the technology to support teaching and learning across all the uh, wider organisations within school. And because we are three quite separate and unique schools, we've got a diverse makeup to the curriculum uh, to the consortium. So what that means is that uh, whatever your requirements are, whether it be sort of primary affairs or it, all the way through to specialist support of those uh, learners with special educational needs then we've got someone within the consortium that, that, that can help you with that and support and because of uh, the, the the diverse makeup as well we can support across all phases of education whether that's um, sort of early years education all the way through to post 16 and I'm hoping above all that um, we will give you a real life view on how EdTech can be used to support across the whole organisation. Um, there's nothing special about us in terms of the, the schools. Um, we are, dare I say it to a certain extent, bog standard schools in terms of how we operate, but it's just how we've, the thing that makes us different is how we've embraced uh, EdTech uh, before we, the situation we found ourselves in um, to, to support teaching and learning and across the wider school. So what can we offer? Uh, well, essentially, whatever you may need to, to us to support with, we can, we can offer. So digital platforms for learning. I think a lot of people are now in that situation where they're looking at the digital platforms that they're going to use or have already chosen one that they're going to use. Um, we're also then looking at how you can harness EdTech for remote and, and probably more importantly now is hybrid working. What does that look like in the future um, in terms of using EdTech to support when we've got some of our learners within school and some outside of school? I think an important point is the third one is about how we keep children safe whilst using the, the, the technology to support that learning process uh, and, and how we make sure that we, we meet the demands put on us around safeguarding. As I've already said, we're quite unique as a consortium in that we can offer a wide range of support in terms of uh, supporting pupils with SEN needs. And that ranges from uh, the, the sort of lower level support that we can offer uh, as mainstream schools in classrooms, but also that specialist support uh, and, and, and pupils with a lot higher need in terms of special educational needs uh, that, that high furlong deal with on a da daily basis uh, within the setting. 
I think the next one's very important. We've we've got to use the the technology to support both pupil and teacher wellbeing. That that is absolutely essential, and it is a stressful time for everyone involved. And I think we need to balance that and and ensure that the edtech is adding value rather than causing more stress. And we can also support with with how you can go about doing that and making sure you achieve that balance. I think for an, to enable all this to happen, and it very much depends on where you are in your journey, it's about using uh, CPD and training and making sure that everyone is confident in using the ed tech uh, to support across school and the wider teaching and learning. And ultimately, I'm hoping that beyond uh, the, the situation with COVID-19, you will be in a position where you want to uh, embed ed tech more widely within the normal running of your, your setting and uh, we can help and support with that digital transformation strategy so probably what i'm trying to stress there is it's not just about the short term now it's about the longer term what is it going to look like in your school or college within the next 18 maybe to 24 months so that's a, a brief overview of, of the, the consortium and, and each school is going to uh, have an input in today's webinar about what they've done, where they're at and how they're going to move forward uh, using EdTech to support that process. Um, could I just say at this point, if you have joined us, can you just please make sure your microphones are off and that your webcam is also switched off? Thank you very much. So where does it all fit in terms of the, the leadership? Well, the first thing I think is around uh, the, the strategic agility. I think the initial priorities on there will be no different for anyone listening to this webinar. Uh, it was about developing the plan, how to operate remotely, planning to support key workers and their children, and also um, those operational plans to ensure we've got technical readiness, i.e. the platform is there to allow that support to happen. I think then we'd all agree that that has changed rapidly in a very, very short space of time to trying to provide that reassurance to all the stakeholders, whether it's pupils, parents, the staff, the governing body, um, the local authority, everyone that's involved in the, in the running of a school. I think it's also about that social and visual interaction in, in terms of making sure that we can support those learners in the mental health needs and also providing that human element. And I think that's a big benefit about using EdTech and platforms such as Teams and Google Classroom at the point, this point in time is that it allows that human interaction to continue to take place. I think that the other thing is it's about reviewing the provision and I, I don't know about your schools or settings but we do this on a, at least a weekly basis now in terms of the provision and what that looks like and how we need to tweak it given the uh, the uh, how the sort of the boundaries and the the the, uh, the the national and local landscapes change it's about that you know assessment about how the engagement is going and that intervention as well and then looking then at enhancements. So do we need to, as I mentioned already, do we need to do CPD webinars and things like that? So I think we're all in that position where we're having to be, you know, in terms of agility around the strategy we're using. And what I'm trying to stress here is that EdTech plays a, a massive part in that as, as, as we find ourselves in the current position. So in terms of EdTech and leadership, I've just put a few points down on this slide and I'm not going to talk through all of them, but this, I think, is where all three schools would say that EdTech has supported that leadership process over the uh, past few months in terms of remote learning, remote working and supporting the wider community. You know, things like it's allowed that, that continuity of governance to, to carry on and, and to keep going. It's allowed that strategic leadership to, 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 be, to be there and in place. And I think this is going to become more important as we move through uh, the, the summer break and then into September, is that although we find ourselves in this remote working and learning situation or hybrid situation, all the normal processes still have to carry on. So we need to keep that recruitment. We need to keep sharing and updating the priorities. And the one thing that's absolutely essential during times of change as we all know is communication and the involvement of, of all stakeholders and particularly your staff and your teachers and your parents and I think that again is where EdTech we've all three of us have found that EdTech can provide that support in terms of leadership and that communication and and, and sort of that uh, consistency of approach so everyone is aware uh, as an organisation where we're going.
So that's just uh, a few slides giving a bit of background and maybe a bit of food for thought around the the leadership and, and where EdTech fits. What I'd now like to do is, is take the opportunity to for the schools, the individual schools to go through their journeys and where they're at and where they're thinking of going. So you get a flavour of what we're about and, and, and we're all hoping that you want to carry that journey on. So hopefully Michael's uh, just joined us now. Michael uh, Goldie, Hello. year five teacher at Hamilton. Hi, Michael. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to Michael and he's going to go and give you an overview of uh, Hamilton Primary and how they're uh, engaging with their tech and using it as, as they stand at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Paul. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just to give you a quick update on myself, uh, my name is Michael Goldie. I've been teaching about 10 years. Uh, I've been a leader in primary computing, ambassador for internet safety, and I also have experience with the Google educational apps, which I'll talk about a bit more today. Uh, just to give you an overview of our school, um, we're a one form entry nursery in primary school. We have 260 children on enro roll. We're based in the village of Hambleton in Lancashire. We have Ofsted outstanding rating, um, and now I'm just going to move on to talk about how we've uh, embedded technology within our school. First thing I'm going to talk about is the one-to-one uh, -one iPad scheme. Uh, Paul, if you could just go back one slide there, thanks. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the one-to-one -one iPad scheme and what we have in place, what we've done with that. Uh, first of all, we've been successfully running for a number of years. It's been run through a third party business. Uh, we always given the latest iPads by them with iTunes credits and we're always given an affordable price. It's usually paid off after about three years. Uh, and if this isn't an option for our parents, they can also bring in their own devices. And we always have made sure we have enough devices within our school for every child to have access to. Um, I, I mentioned this first because I think it's been of paramount importance to our use of technology strategy and our remote learning offer quite recently. Uh, next, I'm going to move on to Google Admin Suite just underneath that. Uh, this is what we use at the moment, and this is the backbone of all our technology. Uh, we have our cloud based share teacher drive on here, uh, which is used through file stream, and that's now embedded into our Windows 10 file explorer for easy access to all our shared resources, assessments, policies and other stuff. This is also set up on all our class iPads for sharing resources, pictures even quicker. Um, we also have wireless board technology in place. Uh, originally, this was a major barrier to learning. So I decided that all our touch screens would be fitted with something called Microsoft wireless adapters. So any teacher, any TA, anyone coming in to share practice or CPD can remotely access any of our screens really quickly at the quick of a button. We used the mirroring technology there. The, for us, this has worked well. We also have Apple TVs which are integrated into all our touch screens. Uh, and that's just in case you have any Apple devices or Macs. I'm going to move next on to the use of apps to support and enhance our learning. Uh, we, we now have apps for every area of education, whether it be our Class Dojo app, which is for rewarding and encouraging positive behaviour. We use TT Rockstars to improve the recall of multiplication and division facts. Recently, Google Classroom, uh, which we now use as our most important app for delivering our remote learning offer or integrating iBooks to copy all our class books. And that's saved us thousands in buying class sets instead uh, and various other EYFS and cube computing apps. They've all really helped us not just substitute our learning offer, but enhance it and make planning more streamlined, manageable and effective. Another important app, which has improved communication with parents and saved many hours of admin time is parent mail. Some of you may use that and you may agree. It's an excellent way uh, to communicate key messages to our parents. Um, so next I'm going to move on to supporting other schools within our network. Now for years we have provided valuable support within our FCAT network. That is our Academy Trust. Uh, we're very fortunate to have loyal and experienced teachers at our school who have been able to offer ways of maybe, for example, myself, I can use Lego to support computer science or with our EYFS teachers who have been supporting other schools and how to deliver that part of the curriculum. Uh, and then that brings us on to the final part of the slide, how we are an accredited teaching school. Now, through the File Coast Teaching Alliance, we provide teacher training for those unqualified teachers, uh, further providing those extra CPD for a large number of new teachers, showing them how technology can be used effectively into the classroom. So I'm going to talk now about our, our journey to remote learning. Um, 
This slide looks at how the EdTech bid was changed uh, to now support remote learning. Originally, it was all just about educational technology, but it had to change because of the landscape of COVID-19. Uh, first of all and foremost, we had our Google Suite for Education, which gave us institutional wide email uh, through Gmail and our shared school calendar, video and voice conferencing. And finally, it enabled us to set up Google Classroom easily. And um, the next thing is our approach through the Academy Network. Uh, first approached, as I recall, by Stephen Cox, the head of Ribblesdale, who seemed impressed with how we use technology and how we used it within our school. And after various discussions with High Furlong and Ribblesdale, we agreed that we could offer better support as a consortium uh, with a wide range of skills in very different areas. This EdTech bid was developed and our application was successful. And then came uh, COVID-19. The benchmark changed. We had to think fast and like all educational settings, put a remote learning strategy in place. We decided to adopt Google Classroom, obviously, Ribblesdale had 365 and High Furlong uh, had to further use remote learning to facilitate learning and enhance communication. Um, next slide, please. So how do we now use that remote learning? Uh, well, we use Google Classroom. It's the Google Suite for Education, which is already established within our academy. We started by doing some housekeeping. We created all our virtual classrooms even a student council classroom and began allocating the emails of all the children to their virtual classrooms. Uh, rights and privileges were then set up and all staff were given unique class emails different to their normal staff emails. Then was the time to put in CPD for staff and children. Uh, firstly, as most staff would be, there was an element of anxiety in the air. With staff um, worried about the day to day setting of work, responding, etc. But we have resilient staff here uh, and once they were shown the basics and shown how easy it was to use they were all on board and i tested it first with my year fives and found it worked really well the next step was cpd for children now this was not as easy uh, we had to literally go around to each class we had to maybe download google classroom apps we had to set up their accounts with their emails give those whistle stop tours easier in year five and six of course a lot harder down in early years in year one uh, but we were very fortunate they had parents on board and we created guides for parents as well as we knew they'd be the key to the engagement and um, having someone with admin rights absolute key myself i can change passwords at the flick of a button with the app on my phone and that's really really helped with parents at home who maybe get locked out of accounts etc um, so did we get it right well of course not no it's it's about reviewing i think paul mentioned this before it's about reviewing and reflecting all the time taking feedback from our parents and using this to support the children further uh we're still on that journey and then finally the communication with parents one functionality is that you can set up a google form uh, which enables us to get feedback on our remote learning offer so what do parents think well, 95% of our parents were happy with the learning offer we provided remotely, where their suggestions were uh, for improvement. Well, of course, there were things like feeding back to students, praise for good work, something that not even all our staff were familiar about doing. So we had to then go back again, look at CPD for staff, making sure we were encouraging um, them and how to do it. Uh, now, all part of this is, you know, it's part of this new and strange learning journey, but mainly and most importantly, Children just miss school and their friends. This is what feedback was constantly saying. The work isn't as important at this stage, although it's always important to provide an offer of work. That was the, the key. And this is what I'm trying to sort of reiterate today. Uh, and then finally, last slide is the future of remote learning at Hambleton. What will it look like? Well, can't be 100 percent at the moment, but we have some ideas in place. And um, one thing is all our staff training and meetings are going to run through Google Meet. We currently do that anyway. Uh, and using our shared calendar, which links up with that, that keeps all staff members notified and keeps good organisation, good housekeeping behind the scenes. Uh, we use this currently and it does work well. Whole school assemblies. Google Classroom is already set up, so that means it only takes one teacher to set an assignment, allocate it to all classes, and then you can have a live Google Meet stream for all children to access at once, save everyone 
holding together in the hall as we originally would do. All classwork, we're still going to set remotely. Whether more year groups come in or not, we don't know what the landscape's going to look like, but for the foreseeable future, all our work will still be set on Google Classroom, whether children are in school or not. This uh, ensures that all children are getting an educational offer, and obviously it supports that staff uh, teacher workload. We don't want to make sure there's too much work for teachers to be doing. Future homework as well. We found that it's so successful, Google Classroom, it really does work. And even things like successes, making sure those star of the weeks, those uh, class dojos for excellent work and things like that, we can pray, we can pride and praise children for that weekly through our Google Meets. Um, and then quite an important one, the parental engagement aspect, create a possible forum within the Google Classroom for parents to discuss any child's needs without them having to come into school. Yes, a, a parent can pick up a phone call, but sometimes it's easy just to quickly buzz a message across and that's some areas which we hope to put in place to support transition when we return to school. Thank you Paul. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, Michael. Uh, it's given us hopefully a, a good oversight about what Hamilton's about in terms of its uh, remote learning journey so far and what your plans are to move forward so thank you for that. Uh, there's just I just noticed there's one question uh, that's come into the uh, the conversation pen and we'll deal with it now in terms of questions uh, and the, it is are you just cloud-based or do you have a, an on-site server backup in, in terms of your school? No, we are just online cloud based uh, at my old school. We did have a backup, but in all the years I was there, uh, it was never even needed. And actually, we find the free uh, Google Suite platform, which Google offer is more robust and secure enough to hold everything that you need. And it has the same sort of functionalities that can be offered as an actual server in a school. I mean, it does depend though, doesn't it? If you're in a larger high school, then maybe you need that functionality of uh, something. But for us, the uh, it works really well, um, the Google Cloud platform. Fantastic. I think that's an important point for everyone is that you don't need the on-site infrastructure to make this happen. Uh, you can just no. get, up, get on with it straight away. And it might be something, if you're not in that fortunate position at the moment, to consider maybe for when we get back in September. That's great, Ma Michael. Thank you very much for your input Thank on you. that session. Thank you. So what I'd like to uh, now do is, um, as I said, we'll do questions as we go through, but I'd now like you to introduce you to uh, Erica. Um, Erica's uh, the Assistive Technology Lead at High Fairlong Special School in Blackpool. And uh, similar to Michael, she's going to take you through uh, what High Fairlong is about with respect to EdTech uh, and their journey so far and where they are going. And I think you'll find that it's uh, a little bit of a contrast. There are some similarities, but there are also a number of differences about how they've handled the, this, this journey to remote learning. So thank you very much, Erica, and over to you. Thanks, Paul. I have to say, well done to Michael for not being distracted with his phone. It made me think, I hope the postman doesn't come and set the dog off. But that is the reality of home, of working from home. So if I just give you a quick overview of who we are and what we're about. So High Furlong is a maintained special school in Blackpool, and we have Blackpool and Lancashire children within our school. And the age range is 2 to 19. And we've got, in September, 96 pupils with a real wide variety of uh, medical and physical needs and disabilities. And our ethos really is to support all our students to be the best that they can be. Um, and assistive technology for us is key with that. So we use lots of EdTech within the school. So we use Google Drive, uh, we use Windows 10 and 365. We've got iPads, which as Michael said, support lots of uh, apps for learning, but also to support communication. So we've got Apple TVs in every classroom. We've brought in recently the VR headsets um, and we, about 18 months ago, we brought in Seesaw, which is a secure platform to engage with parents and students at home. And I think, the, dare I say, the benefit of the working from home, the lockdown has been that actually that has encouraged us and supported us to have our parents engage with us with Cecil because actually now it's been our lifeline between for communication between home and school. Um, I think if you walk around school, what really stands out is the use of technology um, and specifically assistive technology, 
which is in every aspect of our learning. So within our special school, it, it artistic technology to us looks like um, devices to support accessing the computer. It could be software that reads aloud to the pupil to support literacy um, and lots of varieties of communication aids. Next one. So we are part of the File Coast Teaching School Alliance and I sit with Michael and, and we are specialist uh, practitioners for our specific areas. And we have a long history of using technology um, to support those learners, specifically with higher needs, as well as um, all of our students. We really use technology to access education and communicate in order to achieve their full potential and live a fulfilled life. So we have we had a student off the top of my head who came into us in early years, was with us for 15 years, and he, he left with um, accreditations at entry level three and has now gone on to college to work at a level one uh, sports course. And he had complex medical, physical and speech and language needs. And through the use of technology, and the, it gave him the ability to express himself so we could, we could assess his you know, true ability and using this technology as a way of recording his work, he achieved those external accreditations and now has gone to, you know, access college without all that technology around him, that wouldn't have been possible. Um, so we very much in school follow the set process. So it isn't a case of technology for the sake of it. It's looking at what the students need, what are the teacher's requirements of that activity, of that, the task, and then it's for myself and the team at school to really match the technology that will support that. So it could be a paper-based resource, it could be a piece of kit. If I think of, if you think of something like a spelling activity, what is the objective? Is it to assess the spelling of the young person or are we assessing handwriting? Because if there are issues around fine motor skills, and we're not assessing the handwriting, then actually we can, but there are lots of different software and um, aids to access that can be done on a computer. So it really is matching the activity and sometimes the highest tech option isn't always the only option. Uh, moving on. Oh, just So really, how can we support other schools? I think it's really to raise the awareness and show the impact of using technology to facilitate learning and to enhance that communication um, and allowing those, especially those higher needs students to show their individual personalities and contribute and rather than just being asked to request something, which only makes up a very small percentage of our vocab. It's about giving those opinions and contributing and being active learners and it, kind of reducing that heavily reliant adult support which comes naturally when you're working with students with complex needs. Um, and we really, we push for those students to be as active in their own learning as, as possible. By sharing a wide range of technology that can be used to support communication and the curriculum and adopting that more inclusive approach to matching the equipment to the needs of the individual. So as opposed to maybe a whole school buy-in on, if I use iPads as an example, for some students that might not be appropriate. So it's about, but if you have an awareness of the different range of technology, then we can create that personalized support, um, which will have a very personal and measurable impact. Moving on. So remote learning, this has um, really been stepped up over the last couple of months. So Seesaw, as I said before, has really supported students and families with that daily interaction um, and uh, school staff are able to set work. We've seen whole class story times being delivered. There'll be uh, teachers are recording videos and uploading it through Seesaw and sharing. We've had classes doing weekly Zoom catch ups to support students with you know, their emotional health and wellbeing. We have actually created a loan bank so that actually some of the specialist equipment that students are used to using and need to support learning within school is being loaned out to families and then coming back into school and shared amongst and school have been doing that drop-off service. We've had speech and language delivered via Zoom which I think 
It was challenging at the beginning, but our speech and language therapist is highly skilled and has run some really successful lessons. Um, and has been able to remotely update the vocab packages on our communication devices from home and sync it and then offer training for parents and families. So we have been running weekly staff briefings and there's been a massive uptake on staff CPD. And as Paul said before, having all having those shared cloud-based folders means that actually our staff are accessing that those documents in real time as well. So assistive technology really is a tool to also pre-teach experiences. So I know that Hamilton also uses the VR headsets. But for, we are in quite a um, underprivileged area. And some, when you're doing speech and language activities, for example, some of that pre-taught vocab based on real life first-hand experiences for some children hasn't happened. So actually being able to pop on the VR headsets if you're introducing a concept such as like museums, that word actually can be quite abstract for some of our children, whereas they're having to, through the VR headsets now, can pop that on and just have that experience. Whereas actually, they can have as many experiences in a week that might take three or four years to get class trips to actually get, take them out and do that firsthand, which then really supports our students, our teachers to scaffold the, on those experiences and expand the vocabulary. From, a, from an assessment perspective, I think having the tools to really accurately assess some of those students with higher needs who maybe are non-verbal, for example, really supports to get the most accurate data and that we're really adapting our teaching um, as much as we can. And really, I think within school, we feel very strongly that actually all our pupils, regardless of ability, can actively engage with their own, with their learning. Um, and this is, you know, this is relevant to both mainstream and special schools. Next slide. So supporting schools to introduce EdTech into your setting, it's not about going out and buying the highest, you know, the newest piece of kit. That's not always the best way. Um, likewise, assistive technology isn't confined just to special schools. So there are lots of more main, mainstream schools using it these days than say 10 years ago, for example. Um, we support a lot of settings where they might have had it might be like a high profile charity for example that have had a high tech piece of equipment bought but because of the lack of training around that it's been sat in a cupboard for 12 months so it's not always about buying the newest most expensive piece of kit on the market it really is going back to matching the appropriate piece of equipment to the needs of that student so if you've got a child who has a tendency to throw or break things it might be that a paper-based resource is more appropriate rather than you know a nine thousand pound piece of kit and it's also about supporting staff to meet and attend training for assistive technology and within the consortium there are lots of webinars about using exploring the full functionality of existing um software such as 365 google drive for example it's not always about buying because now a lot of our more mainstream software has additional functions that even I've been coming across over the last 12 months. So it's not always about buying a specific new piece of kit. It's about do we utilize fully the existing software we've got as well? Because um, none of our budgets are getting any bigger. <laughs> um, so we can support schools with developing that ed tech plan, which really within our school couldn't come to fruition without the support of our ICT lead, our ICT coordinators, it has to be um, a multi-team approach, really. Um, assistive technology, while I work very closely with speech and language therapists around communication, if you're asking for something to be put on the server or to be shared out across all classrooms, that's where you really need your team around it. Um, and really encouraging other staff to be confident and experiment with technology. I think the lockdown has really forced our hand with that. So whereas we had staff that maybe had never used Microsoft Teams or Zoom before, the fact that we've got quite a lot of staff that are confident, you can support each other with that um, ongoing CPD. And we are able to offer advice through lots of years of using various companies, various pieces of equipment and giving that impartial feedback around what you can expect from a certain company or what products are great. Um, and if we can, we will loan technology before, you know, buying because some of it is quite expensive. So if we can loan pieces of kit to schools, we will do that as well. 
Next slide. So we would like our legacy uh, to have be that future generations of teachers are aware and understand the importance and the impact that assistive technology can have from the simplest form of a single switch to high tech pieces of equipment and realizing that both have a place and it's not just about the most highest tech and the most expensive. Um, it would be great if senior leaders expect these across every lessons all the time um, and it, to the point where it becomes the norm in daily lessons and really demonstrating that for our mainstream schools as well, voice recognition software for students who are doing their coursework if they've got dyslexia, just removing that barrier and focusing on what the students and the individual, individual can do as opposed to what they can't, um, which understandably improves our students' self-esteem and the likelihood is that they can participate rather than being excluded or feeling at a disadvantage to certain activities. Um, it would be great to reduce some of the dependency on support staff by having equipment that allows our students to be as independent as possible. And actually within something that we focus on quite a lot is demonstrating to strategic partners and outside stakeholders that actually at these students, even with higher needs and the most complex of learning disabilities, can contribute to the wider workforce and have got something to contribute to society. And actually using assistive technology might be the way in for them to show that. Thank you very much. And uh, what I say is thank you. Thank you very much for that, Erica. It's given us a clear overview of what High Fairlong is about and how the EdTech can be used to support those learners with additional needs. And I think the important point to note there is that, as Erica mentioned, a lot of the um, skills and techniques they use for those uh, students with higher needs can also be applied in the mainstream setting, yeah. which is probably the area that the majority of us sit. So that, that that's very important. Um, in terms of questions, I just had a look and there's nothing coming at the moment on that, Erica. But um, if you have any questions, anybody, we will have a, a session right at the end as well. So if anything springs to mind as we go through, then please feel free to ask those questions as we get towards the end. So thanks very much again, Erica. I'm now going to uh, introduce you to uh, Lee Small. And uh, Lee Small is one of the uh, associate senior leaders at Ribblesdale High School. Um, and he's going to take you through the journey in terms of uh, in, within a secondary setting uh, at Ribblesdale. So over to you, Lee. Thank you very much. Hello and uh, hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. So um, as Paul um, introduced, uh, we are from a school in Lancashire called Ribblesdale High School. And um, we are a, a comprehensive uh, community school and uh, we are have from the age group of 11 to 16 and we've got a very mixed cohort of around about 1300 pupils from a range of different backgrounds. Now Ribblesdale High School uses Office 365 um, across the school to support the teaching and learning and um, as well as the demonstrator school programme we have also um, been accompanied as a, as a Microsoft training academy as well. And um, one of the things uh, that, that we do uh, pride ourselves in is that we have over 1,000 students currently with their own one-to-one -one Windows 10 device. And uh, that is there to support their learning at home and at school. So obviously when it came to um, the, the current situation that we were in, um, Ribblesdale were in a very fortunate situation to be able to carry on and support our learning uh, of our pupils. So the first thing that we want to talk about is, is EdTech and um, the importance of it, um, I think is, you know, it, it's been a common theme um, on this webinar at the moment that EdTech isn't something that you just bring in and, and think it's a quick fix. Um, it should be brought in with some thoughts, with a digital strategy um, and ensuring that it has a purpose. Now, when it comes to bringing in the right type of technology, um, it should be be, and that's a question that we get us asked quite a lot, what, what technologies do you think is suitable for, for ourselves? And, and, and the, the honest answer is, is it's different for every single, um, every single college, every single school that we, that we speak to. But the thing that Ribblesdale wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that we had technology there to support the teaching and learning of our pupils to enhance that experience. 
and that was an extremely important thing because when we provide our teachers with the with the skills and the CPD to be able to use um, the new technologies that we bring in, this should be adding to their teachers toolkit. Basically, if they believe that that is the, the best piece of technology to use or the best piece of technique or teaching pedagogy to use at that time, then that should actually be, be used. But if a more traditional method is, is more suitable, well, then that's absolutely fine. OK, as we were bringing in new tech, there's um, the, the main thing that we thought about is, is we wanted to get our staff trained first. So our staff were all provided with devices first and, and they went through a very, very um, long uh, procedure of our CPD and continuous CPD. Um, we started quite small where we started to use the likes of OneNote and um, to uh, have like a department improvement plans and just to enhance communication. And then we started to um, use the different types of technology a little bit more where we started to then experiment with them within our classroom environments. And with that built confidence from our teachers and, and they got uh, more and more confident to be able to use this type of technology to support the learning within within Ribblesdale High School. Now we have a variety of different tools that we have at our disposable. So some of the, the ones that we do use are um, OneNote, um, uh, which is a basically an online um, class book and um, we use LBQ, uh, Century Tech and we've got very many more Doddle which is a um, allows us to track the progress and uh, I'm sure that a lot of us have heard of Kahoot and, we, and at the moment we, we're using an awful lot more the likes of Quizlet, Wakelet um, and, and the fact that we use Teams allows us as a digital hub allows us to connect to all the different types of software out there already and to actually combine them and bring them into into just one place and then the question is well why bother why, why bring in this tech and and i think the thing is is that you know we wanted to move with the times as well you know our pupils are now basically uh, they, they are digital literate literate um they are very, very capable of using technology. They're born with, with technology. You know, our pupils um, have tablets and different devices on growing up. And then when they come into a school, we sometimes, you know, forget that that's what our pupils and and, uh, and our community are used to. So we wanted to, to ensure that we started to bring that into to Ribblesdale, but also what's more important is to be able to measure that impact. When we're actually bringing in this type of technology, can we measure the impact? How, how are we going to evaluate that, that what we're doing is correct? Because we, we have that quite pragmatic approach. If we don't think it's working and we don't think it's suitable, um, we then do step away from it and, and we don't continue with that technology and um, we move on and, and we we try and find a different approach so when um, COVID-19 hit, um, basically Ribblesdale were at quite a fortunate um, position. Um, we had technology integrated all the way throughout um, our teaching and learning, our staff communications, our whole community school communication. Um, but obviously the the impending closures, uh, the very first thing that we needed to do is, is we needed to plan. And this is an actual photo here at the moment with our SLT team. Um, to actually um, planning or uh, during a staff meeting that we were currently holding via Teams. And uh, before we actually went uh, all closed, we held several meetings on Teams, just ensuring once again that our staff were still comfortable, still confident on how to use that. And we knew that EdTech was going to be an absolutely important part of that planning process, how we deliver um, our resources, how we engage our students, how we communicate to our parents. And we wanted to ensure that that was um, a really big part of, of, of what we were doing and how we were going to support our community. It also gave us and allowed us to be flexible um, and, and that is something which, which EdTech has allowed us to be able to do. But it, as a school we wanted and the main thing was to try and maintain normal running as much as possible. Um, now obviously that word normal is, is very different th than it used to be okay but I think it was more wanting to ensure that we had familiar procedures in place for our pupils and our staff, OK? And we wanted to ensure that they continually used the platform that we use, is, which is Office 365, to support that remote learning. And before we close, we had to ensure that all of our staff, our pupils, were all 
happy. They knew the processes that we were going to do, and we communicated this to parents via um, apps that we we um, that we currently use, for example, school comms, and um, also um, different platforms by using Microsoft Teams as well. And a very important thing that we do use is we use uh, a, something called Intune. And what Intune allows us to do is it allows us to repurpose our devices um, and ensure that we could also control um, the security and, and the, the devices that pupils have as well when they're at home, um, just to ensure that they have the software that they need to be able to support their learning, that, but more importantly, that they're actually safeguarded off-site as well and uh, ensuring that uh, everything that they could do was done within a safe environment. So what did we expect from our staff? How do our staff work during this remote um, learning period? Um, well, the first thing is how much uh, we needed to give them and, and let them know how much that uh, did they work and when do they work. Um, so with, uh, within Ribblesdale, we provided um, a, a time frame of half nine in the morning till um, 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, that's when our members of staff would set the work and be available for pupils to be able to communicate to support that learning process. And uh, we also uh, gave time for uh, form tutors to be able to support the learning uh, support the pastoral system, sorry, within school to have a uh, weekly or daily form meetings um, where they uh, join a meeting very much like the self, uh, like uh, we're doing uh, ourselves now, where we can uh, basically check in and say hello and have that human interaction because that's also very, very important for the well-being of, of everybody um, within the community. And we did that by using Teams, Microsoft Teams, as, as our foundation. Um, like we said, it, you know, we started to use it through teaching and learning, and we just wanted to build upon those aspects that we already had, and to make sure that um, basically this was the vehicle that we were using to be able to drive the the policies and the operations that we were doing within Ribblesdale. And uh, uh, one other thing that we, we did think of is, is basically is, is less is more. Um, so what we were worried about is we were worried that our students would be overloaded with work and obviously feel quite anxious. Um, so the way that we approach that is we set our students um, work um, when we teach them within the timetable day um, and they receive five lessons of work um, for so if you teach a student for uh, sorry i'll try that again if you teach a class for one hour they would receive half an hour's worth of work from you as a teacher and that uh, was then distributed to them on the day that you taught them so the idea was is that um, within the morning from nine till around about half 12 the students would um, would be engaging in learning and then afterwards then would be well-being activities uh, the the reasoning for that was to ensure that they had you know a bit of consistency they had a reason to get up and and they had that sort of structure within their day um, and that, that that activity at the end was you know that we we're, we're trying to do and um, was to build the togetherness of, of of our whole community to ensure that everybody was was happy everybody was working well and that um, everybody was supported and as we have been continuing on this uh, this COVID-19 we've also ensured that our staff are still continually receiving their CPD um, and that's done through very similar webinars like this where we have staff who, who uh, put on um, 15 20 minute webinars uh, twice a week uh, where they focus on a, a different um, part of software and the the feedback from staff on that has been absolutely fantastic and uh, the uptake has also been um, very very uh, positive and the next thing that we need to look at and think about was our pupils so we need to think about uh, the first of all the challenges so obviously there is a variety of different abilities when it comes to using edtech uh, for our children and and that is uh, is standard you know within school um so we needed to make sure that they were given all instructions guides they knew what to do basically we reassured them um and and that was to alleviate that anxieties and one of the major things to do that, and, and our technicians could tell you, uh, they spent quite a long time repurposing devices for pupils and members of staff to ensure that they were ready. Um, so any pupils that didn't have their own one-to-one -one device and, and used a, a device within school, that was repurposed and given them to take home to support their learning at this time. And um, that, that, that was all there to ensure that pupils felt much more comfortable as they moved into a different different way of learning so 
how did we support that learning? Once again, it was all through teams. It, it was done through academic um Academic uh, support was all done through class teams that we set up and um, we then encouraged our pupils to support each other. So when any questions or anything like that, pupils would support each other. And um, that, that worked really well as that that once again ensures that that independent learning um, is fostered, which is what is so, so important uh, when we're using this technology um, and ensuring that our pupils are are happy to solve problems and, and think think you know critically um, and really important part was the activities that we were setting and um, we wanted to ensure it wasn't just about learning it was about keeping them safe it was about their physical and their mental well-being we give not just pupil challenges but whole community challenges where we like to get parents involved and um, doing activities so for example uh, different uh, Facebook um, or um, different social media trends that you might see for example keeping up of the uh, the toilet roll we we got our community involved there they were involved in different baking activities and it really does bring the community together and basically doing our best to keep it together and that's also through parental involvement talking to them communicating to them and something that's really gone down well is our head teacher um, every week um, actually puts on a vlog um, on um, social media accounts where he speaks to the parents rather than writing a formal letter and and getting feedback from parents that way and as well as that it's sending out those Microsoft forms that we do and um, so we can get those feedback from those parents and actually see how we can support them more and what we've got to be concerned about with our pupils as we move forward. So teams at Ribblesdale, as I said, it, it's a fundamental part of, of the learning at the moment on what we do. Um, but before we actually went into remote learning, it was still that fundamental part. And uh, now don't get me wrong, not all members of staff would use it um, in the same way that they are using it now. Um, and it was more used for collaboration, sharing of resources for staff um, at, at that time by the majority of staff. Um, and some teachers started to, did, uh, started to use it as that digital learning platform where they started to engage some classes. For example, we have English teachers who have uh, no no exercise books at all. They only use digital means. And then during the the remote learning, um, remote working, uh, obviously things have had to evolve. And uh, Teams has now basically become the virtual classroom. Um, and it's the the glue or the cement that allows that teaching and learning to take place. And um, without that, it would be very very difficult to be able to communicate in different ways. And you know, the, from the feedback we've got, um, our pupils and our parents and our community have really really. Um, felt that they are fortunate to have this system in place. And as we move forward, it's it's that new new approach when we when we hit September. None of us really know what it's going to look like um, at this time. But I think that the fact that we have teams puts us in a position where we know that we can be a little bit more flexible about how we approach things and um, that we can we can assess the situations as they come in and be able to adapt our practice from, from what um, our pupils and, and our community want because we still want that consistency within teaching and learning as we move forward whether that's on site or off site and we still want that delivery of lessons and and the whole communication and collaboration and teams will still be there to be able to to as the vehicle to drive and, and move that forward. So next, we will obviously be in a hybrid teaching and learning method as we move forward in, in September. And as I said, none of us quite know where that is, but we're going to start looking at live and pre-recorded lessons as a school. Um, and I think that our um, pre-recorded lessons is something that we're moving into because it allows pupils to have that dual coding. They can obviously, re you know, rewind, go back and re-watch something if they don't understand the concepts. And then we're going to introduce some more live lessons lessons okay and um, but the live lessons are probably going to be more lecture based um, where uh, we will have a, a whole um, a whole year um, or a whole year seven in watching a science lesson um, and we'll ensure that we also do continue with those smaller lessons where pupils can have the conversations to ensure that their well-being is there 
and we will still be using our team's assignments to ensure that we're scaffolding the learning of our pupils by providing with different uh, resources because it, it's the teaching pedagogy as well that we're the you know teams allows us to do teams is only the vehicle um that allows us to to produce that learning for our pupils but it's still up down uh, still down to the teacher to ensure that they're right using the right pedagogy to enhance the learning and support the learning and the well-being of all of our pupils um and also being allowed um and teams also gives us that ability to be able to track the engagement of our pupils as well to make sure that they are um they they are obviously um within teams and 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 um carrying on with their learning journey and as we move forward we'd also like to be able to develop the different apps that integrate into microsoft teams um so for example learning by questions microsoft forms we've got a couple more for example the likes of flipgrid or wakelet which we're starting to have a little look at and as we start to introduce these new possibilities into the teachers toolkit so they are there when teachers think they are best we will continue with that staff cpd ensuring that staff are comfortable and confident as we move forward and thank you very uh, much for that lee that's a great overview of uh, what what happens at ribblesdale um, in terms of remote learning so thank you very much for that um i'm just checking the questions and nothing's popped up at the moment so we'll do we'll move on and just do the the big questions at the end if there's anyone wants to come off mute and ask that uh, but thank you very much for doing that so i think the next thing that i just like to consider is you know where next what what you've you've heard about us as a consortium and we're here to support you you know via the the edtech demonstrator project in whatever form you you want that to be but i think there's a there's a lot to take in and there are lots of things to consider but if if i was sort of in your position at the moment thinking about well what are the next steps i think number one is if you're not already done so register your interest for some more support from one or all of us and it's not very often that things come along that are free in, in education and this is one of them that the, the funding is there to support uh, schools and colleges in whatever form that may be it might just be you want to speak to us as a sounding board to check you're going in the right direction or it might be to help develop your whole your whole school strategy about the use of edtech whatever it may be in order for that to happen you need to register your interest and i'll show you how to do that uh, at the end of this presentation I think the second thing is put put together your own EdTech plan. It is going to have to flex. It is going to have to adapt because that's the situation we're in. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not only talking about the short to medium term plan to get us through the, the situation we're in at the moment, but it's also that longer term plan. What is EdTech going to look like at your school or college? As I said before, in maybe the next 18, 24, 36 months, uh, how's it going to become embedded in, in, what, in what you do? And I think it's about that stickability. You're going to have a lot of goodwill and momentum from staff using technology because it has been forced upon them to a certain extent. So how are you going to harness that um, excitement and that engagement from the staff and from the, the, the pupils as well to move forward? I think it's fundamental that you review those procedures you have in place in terms of keeping young people uh, uh, safe whilst rem working remotely. And uh, we get asked this a lot about how we do this. Um, it, at Ribblesdale, it's an integral part of many policies. So whether that's your behaviour policy, whether that's your safeguarding or your acceptable use policy linked to the use of technology, it's an integral part of those policies. It's not a standalone. And I think that's key really in moving forward. If you carry on your journey with EdTech, it becomes a more integral part of the skill, not just a necessity and a bolt on uh, to facilitate something. And I think ultimately, I think there are lots of things out there. I'll put the Microsoft Educator Centre on there, but there are lots of resources out there about how to teach with technology and to support uh, both at an apps level, whether it be around Teams or Office 365 or Google Classroom, but draw on that wide range of, uh, of resources that are out there to, to support you in, in the next stage of your, your EdTech journey. If you want to contact us and follow what we're doing, uh, that's most of the people involved in today's call and there are Twitter handles that you can see on there, so feel free uh, to do that. Lee will be sharing this um, this webinar anyway as a link um, probably early tomorrow morning, uh, so you'll be able to access this later. The important one is at the top. Uh, that's a link to our uh, demonstrator website and on that website you can find 
all the events that we are running between now and in, uh, I was going to say up to the summer, but beyond the summer now as well. Um, you can find uh, the recordings of those webinars and a, a wealth of other materials that we're now building up to, to support the use of EdTech. Uh, more importantly, there's a link on there as well to take you through to the um, the DFE's EdTech Demonstrator website where you can sign up for support. And I'd actively encourage you wherever you're at on your journey to do that, because that will unlock the possibility of us being able to then support you further with your EdTech journeys. So as I said, Lee will, will share that anyway in the future. So you'll, you'll be able to access that at a later date. So what I'd like to do at this stage is um, I'd like to um, ask if there's anyone that wants to come off mute and, and ask any questions. I'm just going to have a quick look as to whether any more have come up in the chat. But it's if there are any questions anyone wants to ask at this stage, then feel free to come off mute now. Either myself or one of the others that are presented will, will answer that. Um, if not, obviously Lee will make contact later on. Um, and you can you can ask the messages direct to Lee, and we'll we'll be able to to answer those as, as as well as we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to draw this webinar to a close. Can I just say a big thank you? We and I appreciate everyone is very busy at the moment uh, with their own situations in terms of schools. So it's a, a big thank you from me and the the rest of the presenters. And as I said, I'm hoping for a lot of us this is only the start of, 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 a, of a working relationship moving forward in terms of supporting ed tech, uh, both yourselves and, and in your wider schools or colleges. So thank you very much and have a good rest of the day.